Well, happy Tuesday. Today is April 13th. I don't think there's anything unlikely about Tuesday the 13th. I'm sure there's somebody out there who gets a little concerned. Uh, today we have Jose Sardui. Uh, I think you'll find him uh, very, very funny. Uh, tears to my eyes watching this one. Uh, just, I had a good time watching it. Uh, when it's over, I'll have a couple, I'll have a, a little story about my time. Uh, so, Jose, take it away. My name is Jose, and nobody believes me. That's the story of my life. I used to live in Texas. I went to meet a woman's family. The dad opened the door. He was like, You're Jose? <laughs> Woo, we thought you was going to be like a real Jose. You know? <laughs> It's like, what did he think was coming to the door? Like some dude with maracas, like, I'm here today, you're done! Okay! <laughs> I don't know what he thought. I thought maybe that was just the South, but I used to live in Philadelphia, a lot of different cultures up there. I met a Puerto Rican guy. He's like, what's your name, man? And I go, my name's Jose. He's like, no, papi. <laughs> your name no can be Jose. I'm like, yes it is, I was born in Cuba. He's like, you look like a policeman. <laughs> I live in Southern California now, worst part is, I'll go to some Cuban restaurant that's run by Mexicans, <laughs> and they'll see me sitting by myself, like, I come back and explain the menu. And, I'm like, and then I feel like I gotta be extra Cuban, like, I got it, arroz con pollo maduro, por favor. And they're like, oh, okay, the guy from immigration, the guy from immigration, and everybody scatters. <laughs> That's how you know it's authentic. The chef is running out the back. Oh, no, they speak Spanish now. <laughs> but I was born in Cuba, raised in Miami, so I'm a good swimmer, obviously. <laughs> <That is. laughs> Did you know that was a stereotype? <laughs> I didn't until I went out for the high school swim team. The coach is like, Sardui, where's that from? I was born in Cuba. <laughs> We're in a win state. We got a Cuban kid. You're a captain. Do you have cousins? Obviously. Um... <laughs> I, um, I did go to school uh, at the Air Force Academy in uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. People don't know much about the Academy and uh, the biggest group of people that don't know much about that place is my family. <laughs> they had no idea what it was. Uh, it was it's a military academy, but the first year you're just running and doing push-ups and learning to iron and, and vacuuming. You're not really, they don't let you near the airplanes. <laughs> they, they point at the airplanes, see those? You gotta earn those. So when I was a freshman, first year, four degree cadet at the Air Force Academy, um, I call my mom every Sunday, and then on Monday, an A-10 fighter plane crashed in Wyoming. Pilot survived, but the plane crashed in Wyoming, which, I don't know if you know this, is not Colorado Springs, <laughs> Colorado. <laughs> my commander calls me in his office Tuesday morning, and he says, Cadet Sardui, stand at attention. I was like, yes, sir. I was ready to go. Whatever he wanted me to do, I was ready. He said, I'm going to play you a voicemail. <laughs> and you normally only get phone calls on Sundays, but I need you to go call your mother and explain exactly what you do here. And I was like, oh, I don't want to hear this voicemail. This is going to be bad. This is going to be a bad voicemail. I don't want to hear it. Here's my mom's voicemail, word for word. Boop. Please call me back, click. <laughs> she didn't leave her name. <laughs> or my name. We had to star 69 her, which is an old timey phrase now. <laughs> People don't know what, I, what we do there at the academy. I know that because when I would come home, for the, like, the holidays or something like that. I would see my friends that went to real college, 
And they would try to exchange stories with me. And I'm like, hey, what's it like at the University of Miami? Oh, Friday nights are awesome, man. Sometimes we get drunk. Sometimes we fight. Sometimes we make out with strangers. It's usually girls. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Who was it the rest of the time? Statues, bro. They look good. <laughs> and then they want to ask me, what's like the Air Force Academy light on Friday night? You shooting guns and blow things up? I'm like, yeah, sort of. I'm blowing up that vacuum and son what i can vacuum up a wall that takes core strength <laughs> reason we did that is because we had white glove inspections on saturday mornings so i'll tell you my favorite white glove inspection ever me and my roommate we're at parade rest standing in our room next door they're getting yelled at so i know we're next i'm doing one final check of the room before they come in our job was to standardize closets we had to make 30 closets look identical. I look up, we forgot to do our closet. Yeah, we did 29 closets, forgot to do ours, and it wasn't even close. And I was like, oh no, they're gonna yell at us so hard. Bro, we forgot to do our closet. First time I looked at my roommate in 45 minutes, he is sweating profusely like he just got out of a sauna. Pit stains are developing, left eyes twitching. He's kind of swaying back and forth. He looks at me with this pain face. He goes, Jose, man. I'm really sorry for what is about to happen in this room. And I was like, I have put too much pressure on my roommate. So I, I tried to relieve the pressure. I tried to tell him, it's not the big a deal. We'll just get yelled at. But I didn't get to finish that sentence. Because I said, dude, it's not that big a deal. We'll just get yeah. And then he farted. <laughs> For so long. I thought he was going to deflate. Like, <laughs> like those things in front of the car dealers when you shut them off at night. <laughs> It just wouldn't stop. I'm like, it's not that big a deal. We just get... <laughs> I thought he was going to levitate like Chris Angel from the butt. <laughs> two minutes he finally was like <sighs> and then I tried to tell a joke the joke I tried to tell was you know the loud ones don't usually smell that bad <laughs> but I didn't get to finish that sentence either I was like you know the loud ones do you smell God, oh no it's on my tongue I tried to punch a fart out of the air and that is when the inspectors walked into the room. There were three of them, this one very attractive female, two dudes take the door. She walks in on a weird scene. There's my roommate all sweaty, comes to attention, big smile on his face. I am no longer facing the right direction. And I come to attention, but I just from the sound, like, ah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and she was a little like, what is this? They didn't train me for this action. But I'll tell you this, she was a professional because she did her job despite this unknown situation. She walked in, put her gloves on the, hey, did you even dust? Do you care at all? This is the most dis She was a pretty lady. She got ugly real fast. <laughs> she looked like those people in the movies when they turn into werewolves. She was like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and the guys at the door don't know what's happening. She turns around like, well, oh, there's a demon at the Air Force Academy. And, and she tried to run away. You can't run from a fart. Not once it's got you. It's like Stephen King's The Mist. You walk in, you got a tail. <laughs> So she's dragging death behind her out the door like, hey, what's wrong? They dropped their hats. We got free hats. They low crawled out of the room. The three of them stood in the hallway for like five minutes like they'd been pepper sprayed. Oh, no. It's in my eyes. So 
somebody is like, we gotta burn these clothes. And then the third was like, you know I heard helps with pepper spray? If you put milk on it, they were like, where are we gonna get milk, Steve? They finally compose themselves. They look in the room like, you two are disgusting. And they walked away. So me and my roommate, we go back to parade rest, which is this position. And I remember I said to my roommate, I said, that wasn't that bad. We should just do that every time. Just warn me next time. I gotta breathe through my mouth. It's like you're eating jalapenos. My roommate looked at me and he said, they didn't check the closet though, did they? I'm like, no, they didn't. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed Jose. I found his, his humor very, very funny. Uh, in fact, it reminded me of an incident that happened to me when I was in, in Marine Corps. Right after boot camp, you go into infantry training, and that's to teach you the basic infantry tactics and things you're supposed to do as a, as a basic rifleman. Everybody in the Marine Corps is a basic rifleman. They call it O300. So we were doing a night march and going up a hill and we were to take a prone position at the top of the hill. Now let me explain a little background here. This is in the middle of the Cuban crisis. So we didn't have a lot of NCOs. Most of them were, were shipped out. So normally you would have maybe five or six NCOs uh, guiding you. And in our case, I think we had two or three. So. We were to get follow this white tape that was laid out on the ground and get in the prone position. Now, it, you got a picture of this. This is relatively dark out. You can't see the guy next to you on either side. Uh, so I got down in the prone position, got my, my rifle at the ready, uh, had my helmet up a little bit so I could see. And as I'm laying there, I suddenly feel a pull on my belt. And somebody picking me up literally from the waist and turning me around, it appears I was guarding the, the retreat. I was facing the wrong way. And I'm reminded of Jack Nicholson in A Few Good Men, you want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. You didn't want me on that wall. But that's my little story from infantry training. I got a, <laughs> a lot of stories. Uh, maybe sometime more will come up. But I hope you enjoyed Jose. I hope you enjoyed my little story. Uh, we'll see you next week. Stay safe. Get your shots. Wear your mask. Stay healthy. Bye. <laughs>